What's happening guys? Doing a little bit of a check-in on the air way to Houston now. I've been a few days in LA uh, area, Oceanside, doing the 70.3 there. If any of you are interested how it went in detail, I did a post on Instagram and I think that describes it pretty good. I'm not gonna go through it all. Uh, it's not gonna be too scenic of a video. I don't have any footage. I went to the S alone. So overall it hasn't been going perfect, but again, it also it hasn't been going completely catastrophal. So you could say, yeah. So it's easy to visualize good stuff when things are going well, but can you visualize it when it's not going well? And I can, so the vision hasn't changed and people can call me delirious and I don't give a crap to be honest. I'm still gonna win Kona, what are you gonna do about it? A few things, you gotta also, I'm also realistic, so a few things in a way that I know I'm on the way to things, I know what I trained, you know, your product of your training and uh, to be competitive at the high end. Top 10, I know what I have to do. For example, I also trained with a lot of people. You could do the same training. Let's say you also do your 30 hours a week with your threshold and all this stuff. And, but you're at this moment, it's just a fact. Even if it went a few percent better, you're around 20, 30% behind, right? So the thing is, you have to find a system that you can pump out more quality in a given week, in a seven day time span. So you have to outwork them by at least 10, 15% per week. And more important than that, not just that, you have to do it more consistent than them. So one thing that's for sure a fact that the average pro triathlete, let's say 10 pro triathletes, not all of them are training 12 months well. I would say, I don't know, I don't know behind the curtain, but I know maybe they're training seven months well and the rest are either injured or sick or things aren't going to plan. I don't know, that's just my take. But either way, I don't care what they do. Again, if I would care what they would do, I wouldn't have started this whole journey. But I need to find a way, otherwise I don't have a believe in my system that I say, okay, I'm doing the exact same stuff they do, except they're 30% or 20%, whatever, up the road. That's just not logical, right? So I'm gonna find a way in training. Of course, it's not complete magic, but you have to do stuff a little bit different if you wanna, not just, you know, I don't, I don't give a crap about being top 10. I don't care about being top 10 in Kona. I don't care about a podium in Kona. I'm setting out to, to win Kona. So I don't care what anybody says about that. I am going to win Kona, so you don't have to be surprised when it happened. It already happened in my mind, it's already a reali reality in my mind. And when it's in my mind, it can also be a reality in this, this world. So yeah, you can tell, you're probably, uh, I'm a little bit angry obviously, but not in a sense that, you know, it's a complete disaster, it's just a, a passion and drive, you know. If, you, if you're on this journey and you want balance and you don't want to lose your mind in the process, then, yeah, well, then you shouldn't say and go around and say that you want to win world champs and want to win Kona. Then you should shut your mouth like most people and just aim for a top 10 and just work in the shadows and not do all this stuff through YouTube and, and Instagram and just basically a loud voice and talking and not back it up what I did now. So if you can't live with that and if you get pulled down by the external, by other people and the results and what happened now, if you get pulled down by that, and not by the internal dialogue, that's the only thing you can control. So overall there have been incredibly many learnings, not just through the race, also what happened afterwards. I trained with other pros, especially Joe Skipper, and he's way up there. Thanks again, Joe, I know you're watching. Thanks for everything, for getting me in touch with other Brits and uh, just riding, and uh, I learned a lot in so many departments. I actually wrote it down, it was 10, 12 points in general from the race, from my own, but also from Joe and just from general stuff I saw, observed and learned and uh, things he shared with me. Uh, so I learned a lot. Uh, one simple one, CDA, like aerodynamics, I'm aware of it, but we both rode next to each other and I need about 40, 50 watts in a flat more than him, both in aero position. Yeah, I didn't have the helmet and some stuff, of course, different power meters, end and end, but uh, <laughs> that just can't happen. But uh, another thing is for sure, the bearings of my wheels are broken. Uh, in a sense that uh, they don't roll well. I noticed that on the downhills. Um, I'm just not rolling the same, although I'm heavier than let's say for example Joe and I'm not rolling as nearly as well. So uh, for Texas, I'm gonna be having uh, different wheels. I'm working on that, how to do that right now. But fresh bearings that at least the wheels are rolling perfectly. And uh, power wise, I think I'm actually pretty good with power. But of course weight is gonna be an issue. Also realizing Knew that before, but I have to find a way. I will find a way to get my way to the 80 mark, around the 80 kilo mark. Not in an obsessive way, but I'm gonna find a way. Because at 85 kilos, um, yeah, on a flat, it doesn't matter, okay, but in running at all, um, 
yeah, I don't need to wait, debate in the comment section, you have no idea what you're talking about, so I know my buddy, but I know what I'm working towards. It's just a lot of things uh, I'm gonna be working on, and I look forward to that, and those learnings wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have been out there, right? So none of that would have happened. I would have had the same experience in Texas, and um, yeah. on the Hardy toll road. Yeah. So I'm here with James. We're gonna be just driving home from uh, from the airport to, to his place. And we're actually on the Hardy toll road now, which is the Ironman course. I mean, you can probably tell more about it. We're just on the road, right? Hey, I mean, we're coming from the airport. As soon as we veer right here, that, that's the course. There it says as well, Woodlands. That's the famous, oh, uh, well, that's the area where the Ironman course is. Yeah, we found the Let's do another little check-in. I thought if I share the journey, then I have to share the whole journey. I have to have all sides of it. And this video will also be a bit of a roller coaster, I guess, because you had first one mindset and one kind of emotion. But basically, what it is, I've also been called now an influencer, which I don't like at all, to be honest, that word. So um, I want to be an athlete first. I really do not care too much about this whole side of it but I care about YouTube in a sense because you can share this whole journey also for me to look back eventually in the future I think uh, it's, it's cool to see the states maybe also when I'm older kind of what kind of mentality you're at at this moment because of course over time in five years I will think different than I do now in ten years I think different so all those things all those things so first of all I don't want to at all sound like a complaint or anything the perspective is very important that uh, I know this is just sports, this is just part of it. But if you, like I said before, if you, let's say, invest a lot of time and energy into something, so I think that's the same even for you. Uh, it's exactly the same, I would say, almost. When you, next to work, invest into an event, and that event doesn't go as you thought it would. <clears throat> and in that sense, I mean, I didn't perform to what I did in training per se, not all of them, and some of them are clear as day now, thinking more rational why that is there are a few pointers obviously where that chance was high and i knew things before as well that for example okay when you come from finland straight it's just, it was just meant to be like a rust buster just have a race before before texas and you know of course you fly in three four days before it's nine hours time difference you have ridden no ride outside basically in tt position and i lost minutes there i'm sure because unless you're comfortable riding 70 k an hour downhill in aero, plus handling, the roads were pretty rough, also holes in the road. Handling has to be good. My handling is horrible at this moment. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't it be? I've just been indoors and uh, doesn't, it's not excuses, but like it's just saying that there were a few things that uh, could have shown. I knew it would impact it. I knew before a lot of things that, okay, ranking also is not something that's gonna be super important. It's a 70.3. 
I know I'll never be competitive at the first 10, 20, it's hard to say where you're gonna land. All those things, knowing that, but what you don't know is the emotion that comes with it. And that has been the last two, three days. There has been a bit, I have to say, my ego had a firm grip on me. And the ego really said a lot of bad things and it really, yeah, it doesn't like it, right? It doesn't like to be 47th is one thing, but also, yeah, just overall, you feel, feel, feel it feels like a failure. I know it shouldn't, but it, it does feel like a failure in a sense because I didn't perform the numbers that I wanted to, but and you know, that's why you race and I'm actually now, although it's very painful, trust me, and unless you could say, ah, you know, it's easy to have an opinion on it, but to be honest, you can't have an opinion on it unless you were one of the few things, unless, for example, you are a book writer who is all in, who left his job, writes a book, and let's say that book gets rejected by 20 publishers, then you know what I'm feeling, or people like that in scenarios, or let's say you do a business, you have a family at home or whatever, and your business, and you're all in, and your business fails, you go bankrupt, or stuff like that. If you haven't experienced all in, 100% all into something, I mean all in, no backup, not part-time job or like whatever, to have one foot still in security to say, okay, if it goes south, you know, I still have the job, that's why it was never really working, right? But if you're not all in and then fail to some extent, I did, did fail, again, you can say many ways, it's the first race. I knew all those things before, of course, it's, you know, you're basically starting from primary school right now, I'm aware of that. I knew all those things before, but it's one thing to say it, what you don't know is the emotion that comes with it afterwards. And that emotion is powerful. And like I said, unless you have done the things I just listed, you don't know that emotion. I didn't know that emotion. I knew things on paper before, it's easy to say how it's gonna be, but I tell you, that emotion is strong. It does not like it. It's not a nice one. But I got out of it, actually what got me out of it, I think I highly recommend for you again, Stephen Pressfield, I talked about it before, he has a really good podcast, uh, I'll link it below, it's amazing, with uh, Tim Ferriss. And he talked really, he talks about resistance always, it's basically a term that tries to boycott us, you know, this inner voice we all have. And I have to say, resistance had a firm grip on me, you know? The resistance really says, just because of that experience, it really kills everything, it says, ah, oh, come on, just, just, just especially when there's some truth to it, then the resistance to inner voice really gets you because it wants to boycott you, it wants to fight you. That that resistance basically, you know, it's especially when it knows you're at a weak spot, if you're like physically weak after had a bad race like now, and there's some truth to it, like this, ah, you didn't perform well, like you kind of don't belong in this area yet, like your all your training, whatever, didn't work, or like, not like that, I didn't think that, but just like, yeah, it will get you. And that resistance got me in the last two or three days. I tried to get out of it, but I couldn't. Only today I got out of it because of the podcast. It kicked me back into resistance because it wants to boycott you, that voice, right? It wants to just say, yeah, just fly home, you know, do more training, don't do another Ironman. Because reality is also, I manifest a lot of good things, but also I think you have to, with the stoicism, you have to kind of think about the things that also could go wrong. And I think I had some expectations still, not ranking wise, but like I had expectations, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this in my kind of data, and I didn't. And again, there are reasons for it, which are reasons which are pretty obvious as well, why this wasn't the case. But uh, it could also be the case, you know, there could be that now Texas will be my worst Ironman of my life. It could be that I decided to do 15 hours, which for me would be very slow, right? So it could be that I walked the whole thing it could be my worst, but if I now give in to this voice that said, ah, come on, just this quitting voice, it wants to make you quit, that voice, right? And if you allow that voice, and there I'm lucky that I had experiences like this before, not in the sports world, this is very new, that's just why it's a fresh, powerful emotion, but I had it in other scenarios in my life. And if you give in to that voice, oh my God, you're gonna be so as well. So no, I have to jump straight back into the fire, straight back into Texas, straight back into the arena, and if I fail 10 times bigger, then shit, oh well, what are you gonna do? Again, the main thing to fight this is actually giving yourself some space, emotion, to feel the emotion. And I went through that now, I'm out there at the end. And it took way longer than normal. It took three, two, three days, really. To kind of get out of this almost depressive mode of emotion. 
and to kind of get back to baseline. But it's important if you're on scenarios like that that you get back on the horse. So put in the work, whatever you're working on, if you're writing a book, whatever you're doing, if you failed in exams, you have to go straight back in it. Again, not straight back a field emotion, but the worst you can do is give in to that resistance voice that says quit, do this, and just ah, just throw it all away or something like that. You know this kind of weird voice that wants to, the resistance in us. If you listen to that voice, you will be extremely miserable. So I think it's extremely important that the fix for this is hard work and getting rid on it and cutting the expectations out. But yeah, I wanted to share this and uh, maybe that helps some of you guys. Again, I don't want to be an influencer or anything. I have no interest at all. If this would come in the way of my journey, I would have no issue deleting YouTube channel tomorrow, including my Instagram. This is not why I do this at all. But number one is being athlete in performance. As you guys know, I, I said it many times, but uh, yeah. I thought I'd share this. Uh, I love it here. It's absolutely incredible here in Texas. Uh, the vibes, the people are extremely friendly. LA area, it's a bit quick and fast and I think it's just a lot of people with Texas, I have to say, it's, it's really special so far, really love it. Gonna get some good training in, I'm gonna document it as well and uh, this is just a little check in after the race and what I went through in terms of emotions, which is okay, which is normal, I get, again, I don't want, I don't want uplifting words in the comments, I don't need pity, I don't need none of that, it's just for some of you out there that might be in a similar scenario because of whatever reason could be even a health scare or whatever it is you know like the main thing is to keep showing up that's the fix if you give in to that resistance voice that wants to make you quit and whatever if you give in to that you'll be so miserable that there's no end to that so uh, you got to keep showing up even though you don't want that at that moment you have to keep rolling with the punches oh we have someone looking whoop <laughs> So I'll be checking out, there will be more content coming from Texas when it's, when it, uh, you know, the climate picks up a little bit. I'm gonna go for a ride still today, two and a half hour ride, 90k, uh, or three hour ride, depends. And a run as well, went for a nice little open water swim with James yesterday, it was really cool, so doing that. But otherwise this video ends here, and uh, if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! All about your eyes and that kind of blue So tell me what you want, what you really like Am I good enough?